This Mary Martin 9395 was a mail order fabric. It's actually marked stamped Toronto March 24th, 1953. The stamp is two cents for this pattern to be shipped. Two cents. Oh, and it's from the Peterborough Examiner Pattern Department. Well, that's fun. It's a 1953 swing coat. It has pockets. It has cuff sleeves that you can roll to any length you want. And the collar is a stand-up collar. The fabric I made it with is a beautiful, vibrant, fall kind of brown burgundy color. It is Waterproof because it's outdoor decor fabric. I just happened to have it and I didn't know what I was going to make with this recycled fabric that I got in a bag of goods at a garage sale. Both fabrics for both of these pieces are actually from the same bag. I had just enough to complete both of them, maybe four inches by eight inches left over on each one pretty much. They are wonderful to wear. I don't know if I'd wear it outside in a hot day because I don't think you'd be able to breathe. Your skin wouldn't breathe because it is a bit plasticky, I guess. But if it's a cold, windy, wet day, perfect coat to wear. So if we look at the instructions here, we know how I like to check out how the instructions would have been in 1953. They did um, no outside packaging. You just got the envelope with the instructions and a drawing of the photo the layout, the pattern pieces. So right here. And how to assemble your coat. Took the front part, and to turn over. The back part is just basic instructions on sewing, on how to do different adjustments to the pattern, when you sew, how to do bias fabric loops, buttonhole, I didn't do any of those with this one. I just kept it basic. Those are the pieces. I get to, I had to grade it up. I always say grade it up. I don't know if that's the right word, but it needed to be graded because it was a size 14, which is a 32 bust in 1953. So the white fabric underneath the pattern pieces are what I did to grade it up. And this is what I completed it with. I've put in gloves here so you can see where your arms come out. And it has a pocket right here, which I did with some pink denim. So we have two pockets, no fastening, no fasteners. Has the facing. And that's my swing coat. It's actually an entry for the Joy Viv so Vintage Challenge, both of them are. The one on the left took me a bit more time because I was grading it. The one on the right, I knew I did not have enough fabric to grade it, so I kept it simple. I kept it the size of the pattern. White right is a regular length cape and short cape worn over matching long pants. Six sections lined cape has faced arm opening in front panel, seams and faced neck, faced Band collar is included in neck seam. Short cape with purchased leather fasteners may be closed part in front with a zipper. Regular length cape is closed part way in front with a zipper. Dart fitted pants have left side zipper. Garments are interfaced where necessary. It did come with pants. There's a pattern for pants and a pattern for the cape. I chose just to do the short cape on the right, but I think the cape and matching pants is a knockout of the park gorgeous. It's McCall's 2118. 17 says it's young fashion patterns, new sizing. Oh, here we go. What year is this? This is 1969. And it says here, new sizing. So this is probably when the sizing started to change. 
step-by-step -step pattern, Mrs. and Junior cape in two lengths and pants. Let's see. Rising in 1969, a size 14 would have had a bust of 36, a waist of 27, and a hip of 38. Here's the back of it. In 1969, this pattern sold for 85 cents. So you know pretty much any patterns below $2 is probably vintage. The fabric is way out there, but it's fabric I had. It is a great fabric, I think, for a cape if you want to be waterproof. The colors, I get it. It's very 1970s, I believe, but it's the fabric I had and I just had enough to make a cape. I'm just working my way through patterns and some of these vintage patterns that I have just to have fun with it. It is darling. I'm sure if any production or play had a need of a cape, it would be great for stage. I don't know anyone who's willing to wear it yet, <laughs> including me. And I realize the circles aren't lined up. If I had more fabric, wouldn't it have been wonderful to line up the circles? But I worked with what I had. There's armholes where the gloves come out. That's where your arms come out. Here are the instructions and they look different from previous instructions that we've looked at. Here is your pattern pieces. It gives you how to cut your fabric, how to place your fabric, and it starts with doing the pants on one panel. You turn it over, you have your pants still, and then three quarters of the section here describes on how to put the cape together. For now, here's the patterns. The ones up front are the ones I did for the swing coat. And you can see that there's some grading going on with the white underneath. On the left is for the swing coat. And on the right is for the cape. This is my second swing coat. My first swing coat, I did upload a video. It's a pink one. It was way more detailed. I had lining, I had cuffs, I had pockets, I had plackets, I had a buttonhole. I had so many things that I learned a lot from. So when I saw this simpler swing coat, I decided I'm gonna make it with no lining, no buttons, no holes in the front, and I added pockets that came with the pattern. On the right, there's no fasteners as well for this cape. It's just a pull-on. Um, I'm thinking I might add a fastener to the neck area just to keep it together. But I'm really pleased with both of them. My sewing is improving. I got through the instructions fairly quickly, fairly easy. The one on the right took me a weekend because I didn't do all the grading and I just went with the sizing, which is so much easier. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot doing the grading. So the one on the left I'm pretty impressed with. So thanks for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed this. Right now we are looking at Mary Martin's Swing Coat 9395 and McCall's 2118 Cape. Okay.